All right, this is Andrew with Mach 2 Drop. In this video, I want to go over a concept in the economic section for level one, which is the law of diminishing marginal returns. So my goal of this video is to break down this concept and make it a little more intuitive. We're going to accomplish this by going through an example that explains concepts such as total, average, and marginal product. So we're going to be working with this chart throughout the video and answering three questions. First question, which is probably the most straightforward question, is what is total product? Second question is, at what point does average product peak? And lastly, at what point does diminishing marginal product occur? So let's look at the first question, what is total product? So in this example, I'm using workers as the input, and the output is going to be the number of units of something. Let's say each worker is making baskets, for example. In some cases, you might see labor hours or machine hours used as the input. The overall concept is going to be the same regardless. So in this case, one worker can produce 500 baskets, two workers can produce 1,200 baskets, and so on and so forth. Our total product is simply the total number of outputs or number of baskets that are produced. Now you'll notice that with three workers, 1,500 baskets are made, but with the fourth worker, or I'm sorry, four workers, only 500 baskets are being made. So it would make sense as a firm to hire the fourth worker in this case, since four workers are producing far less baskets than with three workers. Perhaps the fourth worker is just getting in the way of the other workers and the work is not getting done as done as efficiently. Now if you look at the bottom part of this chart, it doesn't make any sense if you really think about it. How can five workers produce negative 100 baskets? Well, I actually use this chart in one of our mock exam questions on our website as it pertains to the third question in this video. So later on in this video, I'll explain why I designed the chart this way. So now that you have a better understanding of what total product is, let's discuss average product. So one thing to keep in mind about total product is that it doesn't really show us how efficient a firm is gener generating output, or in this case, making baskets. Average product, on the other hand, gives us a better idea of how many number of workers are most efficient. In this case, we can see that two workers have an average product of 600 baskets produced. You just take the total product and divide it by the number of workers. So what this is saying that is that while one worker can make 500 baskets, two workers can make on average 600 baskets each. Perhaps the second worker or two workers just make each other more efficient than one worker. And if you have three workers, maybe there's just not enough tools to go around. Now we're going to answer our last question. At what point does diminishing marginal product occur? But before we do that, if you're getting value out of this video, please give it a like. It definitely helps out the channel. And if you want to see more videos like this, let us know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with our latest videos. All right, the last question we're going to answer is, at what point does diminishing marginal product occur? Okay, so let's say that you saw this problem on an exam, and you were given these three answer choices. Now, any candidate who doesn't have a good understanding of this concept might look at this problem and say, well, there's a key word in the question, which is diminishing, and the total product is increasing from workers one through three. So they may decide on answer choices B or C. They might think it's answer choice B because total product declines from three workers to four workers, or they may be thinking it's answer choice C because it's a negative total product. So I would say that probably most candidates would choose answer choice B if they had you know, little understanding of this concept. And perhaps some would even choose answer choice C if they had just completely skipped over this section. As it turns out, neither one of these answer choices are correct. Now you can see my logic in throwing in five workers with a negative total product. It's actually meant to throw off a candidate who doesn't really have an understanding of this concept. So by now, you might have guessed that it's going to be answer choice A. And what marginal product is telling us is that how much more output is being produced with each additional input. In this case, how many more baskets can be produced with the addition of another worker? So with one worker, 500 baskets are being made. When you add an additional worker, and you now have two workers, you produce another 700 more baskets. And we determine this by taking the total product of the two workers, or 1,200 baskets, and subtract the total product of one worker, or 500 baskets. Therefore, 1,200 minus 500 is 700 baskets. Now, what happens when we hire the third worker? Well, even though the total product increases from 1,200 to 500, that is only an additional 300 more baskets with the third worker. And because 300 additional baskets, baskets produced with the third worker is less than 700 additional baskets produced with the second worker, we can say that the third worker is the point where the marginal product starts to diminish. Now we actually use the same problem in one of our mock exams on our website, and we actually use the average product question as well. So if you do see these problems on our mock exams, you should be able to answer them correctly. 
Okay, so I hope this video was helpful. Again, let me know in the comment section uh, what you think and if you want to see more videos like this. And thanks for watching.